Welcome to the project, everyone. Today, uh, today, this one has a special place in my heart. Instead of shooting foam, uh, we're gonna move up to shooting plastic at each other, which is a ton of fun. Airsoft has had a special place in my heart ever since I was a child, a snot-nosed kid who didn't know anything. All I knew is that camo was cool and shooting my friends in bushes was was a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> As I've gone to college and other stuff, I mean, the airsoft guns that I've had have kind of, uh, I don't know where most of them are. And so some of this stuff is kind of from growing up and I've been able to keep around. And then some of the stuff I just got. I guess just to start off, the reason that I'm kind of getting back into airsoft is because as you might have been able to tell in the videos, I've been really working on the dad bod and you know, I am now a father so that kind of works out but at the same time, I want to be fit, I want to be able to run and stuff like that. And I think airsoft might be a good way to get me outdoors, get me running, and give me a goal for like physical fitness kind of a thing. And there's a lot of other really valuable skills that you can learn from airsoft and, and teamwork and all of that. And so kind of looking to get myself set up again and probably try to find, you know, a team that I can do go do some matches with. But this is basically all that I have on the table here. Again, some of this stuff has been just hanging around for years and I honestly don't remember where some of it came from. Namely, these spring pistols I picked up, you know, somewhere. I, I don't even, I don't remember using those as, as a child, but you know, whatever. Uh, my, my sniper, now my sniper I do remember. I remember buying it from uh, one of my acquaintances and you know, I just heard that, oh man, this thing's super dope and hopped up and like, you know, this is a killer. And then I didn't really play much airsoft after I bought it. <laughs> so this one has just mainly sat around to terrorize my brothers and sisters on campouts when I feel like bringing it. Oh my goodness. And I used to have two mags, but now I only have one. So that's the sniper. Now we get into some of the stuff that I, I kind of got more recent. Namely, uh, I had a green gas blowback when I was younger, but recently I got some Glocks, some Glock green gas blowback. So we got a Glock 17 and a Glock 26. So full size subcompact. And these have been really great for, you know, shooting around in the garage and whatnot. And now if I do actually go do matches, they'll be good for as like a sidearm. This, <laughs> this camo vest thingy, uh, this one is another thing that's just been kicking around for so long. I think this used to be my friends and I did get in touch with him recently when I figured out that I had it and he said he doesn't want it anymore. So now we have a nice, well, I don't know if I'll use this, but we have this little vest. And then the most recent purchase and the whole reason that I'm making this video is about this. So now this is an M4. This is an AEG, which means uh, automatic electric gun, airsoft gun. So it's electric, uh, so there's like not, there's no kickback or anything, but we do have full auto and safe as you saw in the intro. Uh, I do have the orange tip for it. I do I do want to run the black tips, but since I've gotten older, I've realized how important it is to make sure you're you're looking the part if you're doing airsoft. So I want to get a cover for this later. For the video, we just have it black because, you know, this is my own garage and I know no one's going to think this is too crazy. This is exactly how it came. We got a sling on there. I got it in like a little bundle. We've got some polymer mags. I think I've got five of them total. And everything I have is marked Dean, which honestly, maybe I'll keep because, and so if I just know everything of mine is marked Dean, then boom, there we go. But in this kit, I actually got a couple other things that I've really wanted. Well, mainly one thing, uh, the bunch of mags is really good, uh, but I also got this, it's a Conograph, which is awesome. Cause I wish I had this for the Nerf video, which if you haven't seen, go watch that. That was kind of fun. So now we can actually see how fast the Nerf is shooting and we can see finally, what all of these guns do as far as like FPS and with different bolts and whatnot. And then this is gonna be the main thing that we're gonna try to upgrade, at least in this video. It might be a multi-part video. Cause again, these are just fun projects that I'm working on and glad you guys are here with us. But so yeah, this video, this is the main star of it. There's a few upgrades that I wanna do on this. So the way that the battery compartment works is that comes off, they both come off. And then we have a little battery in here. 
And the battery that he gave me, which I guess is inside right now, the battery he gave me is a 2S LiPo, so it's like seven some odd volts. And that works, you know, but from what I've seen, most people run a 3S or a 3-cell LiPo. So uh, I got a 3S, a couple 3S LiPos, and we're gonna change out these connectors. From what I've seen, and this has been even since I was a teenager, Tamiya connectors are pretty standard, and then, you know, everyone's like, oh, Dean's connectors, go to Dean's. And even in my RC car days, Dean's connectors were like, oh man, you can push a lot more current through Dean's connectors. And then now, when I'm getting into Airsoft, I'm looking at it, it's still, oh, most things are Tamiya, and people who modify it go to Dean's because, you know, you can push a lot more current through Dean's. But I've also been into uh, FPV drones, which they all use XT60 plugs. And so all of the batteries and stuff for when I was more recently into drones have the XT60 in there. So I, I think I'm going to convert all my stuff over to XT60 so I can charge all my batteries. There should be no concern about how much current can go through the XT60 because I'm pretty sure it's comparable to the Dean's or else everyone in the FPV space would be using Dean's as well. So I think XT60 might actually be an improvement over Dean's. So we're going to modify the old battery, the new batteries. We're going to modify my gun to be Dean's. Maybe use these other ones for little converters if we ever need to. And then I also got a shim kit. So we're gonna shim the gearbox in here. So we'll be running on 11 volts. We'll shim the gearbox and clean it out and make sure there's good oil in there or whatnot. And hopefully, you know, replace any O-rings if they're bad. And hopefully just by doing that, we can actually improve the FPS of this gun. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I've already gone through the chronograph and chronographed all these guns and thought it was really interesting. And that's when I actually was like, you know, maybe I should make a video about this because I'm kind of interested into it right now. And it's a lot of fun to see where all these stack up and having the chronograph was really an eye opener for it. And I got some different weight BBs. So before we start modifying this, I think we're gonna go through and actually uh, chronograph all of these guns, just so you kind of get a lay of how well everything is doing. So we're gonna run through the guns and just show you the chronograph of each of them. We'll do two rounds through each. First up, we're gonna do Nerf guns. So this is my unmodified one. And uh, 63 FPS, I guess two rounds, so 63.3. Now we do our modified one, if you've seen that in the video. I'm not sure if this is gonna do much better. Let's see if I can get it to shoot right. 60. 72, so it looks like, depends how good of a seal it gets on there, but it has the power for it. Okay, now on to actual airsoft guns. I have two Berettas. Uh, this is from UK Arms, made in China, and it feels heavier. Like it feels like there's some metal components, and this is by KWC, which I think is a more well-known brand, made in Taiwan. So I know that this, the heavier, bulkier one actually shoots worse, so. Do two rounds and 93. Ooh, 104, wow. So now we do the KWC one. This is plastic, really light, but I think it shoots quite a bit better. Yeah, almost 200, 189.5. 215, so yeah. KWC made in Taiwan plastic shoots way better than UK arms. So now I'm gonna do my Glock 17 cause this one I know functions correctly. So while I have gas in the mag, let's do the Glock 17. My Glock 26, not so sure it uh, functions like it should. 264, 251. So yeah, this is in like the 250 range. Now we have subcompact Glock 26. This is from, what is it, Spider Tactical? Made in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, something like that. Maybe 2001 era? Here, I guess I didn't tell you. This one has a KG, KJ, KJ on there. Uh, made in Taiwan also. Quan Ju Works is this Glock. Okay, Glock 26. Last time I tried to do this guy, he, uh, didn't work that well, so let's see if it works. Nope, he did that exact same thing. But 210, 
222. Yeah, he was like emptying the mag. So maybe in another video, we'll actually clean this guy out and see if we can get him to work correctly. Okay, need to put in our 7.4 volt Tamiya connector battery and then get this all to close up nicely. Now we have our GNP M4. I think online, the closest thing I found is said it could shoot like 350 or something, 350 to 400. So let's see if that is actually true. 337, 338, or sorry, 333. And then let me put up foam to make sure I don't accidentally break my targets. Now I actually have my sniper rifle. I honestly don't know who made this. It is pretty old and it would be fun to get parts for this if I can figure out what it is. 406, 411. So there's my whole range of guns and how well they shoot. I was actually impressed that the China made one got to 100 FPS like before it was like 80, so it was like barely better than a Nerf. This guy definitely could use some work, the Glock 26. And uh, yeah, it just goes up from there. I will say everything was with 0.12 gram BBs, which again, are really only used to sell cheap ammo to people who don't actually play airsoft from what I can tell. So I have heavier BBs to test out and especially some like really heavy ones for the sniper. But even then it's a little disappointing because you know, I should be hitting 450, 500 FPS, you know, and try to be with like heavy BBs on the sniper. And then this guy should be like 350 to 400 on the heavier BBs as well. But right now on the light BBs, it's like 330. While this is 400 on the light BBs. But overall, I do like this platform so far. And there's a few different things that we need to improve on it. Uh, for one, I did find the other clip for this sling because uh, this is a terrible sling setup so i don't know yeah i'm not sure what's going on there but first on this gun uh, we need to change out the battery connectors to our beloved xt60 on all of it um, and then we can see if a higher power battery three cells will actually do better on it oh you know what here's a quick one so if you remember in the nerf video uh, i had a couple reflex sights like a red dot and i guess this is technically a reflex and i put these on the nerf guns well i don't think i'm gonna be using the nerf too much sorry guys so i'm gonna put one of them on here and uh, i want to try it i tried this one because it's so low profile but here's the thing this front post which i don't really want to take off it would be a pain this front post is right in the way so I think this Swamp Fox one uh, will actually do perfect. Yeah, and it'll it'll be able to co-witness. So most of the time I can just have this flip up sight down and use the reflex sight. But then when I need, if it ever runs out of battery, boom, back up iron sight. And I can just look through the optic to get that. So that's gonna be a big improvement. Let me get that on real quick. You know, and I will say when I mount optics, uh, I wanna push this back as far as possible. And this flip up iron side, I flip back as much as possible. Um, so that way I get the biggest field of view. So that way it's not gonna obstruct my view and I can see as much, you know, a lot of stuff through it. And if I flip up the sight, sure enough, yeah, I can still use the iron sight if need be. But now we have a reflex sight on there and that, that'll help a lot. Shim kits. So if you don't know, there is a whole gearbox down in here with the motor in the grip. So the motor comes down, you got the whole gearbox in here that, you know, drives the piston to push out the air, a lot like a Nerf gun, but a bit more robust. In here, if we shim all the gears so they have no play, that'll help the whole system be a lot more efficient. It'll be quieter. It should shoot maybe, yeah, yeah, I guess technically faster. So we want to make this as efficient as possible. And that's where you can get shim kits and uh, shim it up in there. And I actually got two different shim kits. This one from Dream Army, where it has like the different colors and different shapes to tell you the thickness of it. And then another one that was also really cheap, uh, which is inside right now, uh, that has like cubbies in it. I'll link both of them down there. But 
I found an issue with both of these. So the way that these shims are made is there's a flat sheet that's really accurate thickness and then they punch out the shims. The problem with that is when you punch the metal, it can deform and leave a burr on the inside. So when I started measuring them and looking at them closely, they all had a burr, especially on the inside, which is gonna totally ruin the efficiency and make inconsistent thicknesses. So what we need to time lapse is changing out the connectors and then I'm going to actually carefully file down the shims so that way there's no burrs, they shouldn't rub against each other, they should be identical thicknesses and everything. I thought it was just with the cheap no-name one or whatever in there, uh, but even this Dream Army, granted the, the brass ones aren't that bad, but some of the other ones do have a burr on there. So you gotta be careful about that. It looks like whatever shim kit you get, you should be careful and look for, for that burr on there. And I do have a photo of the burr in my caliper. Uh, so we'll put that up right now, just so you can kind of see what it looks like, just so you know what to look like for that burr. And if you run some tweezers or something across it, you'll feel the tweezers catch on it. And then, you know, your 0.1, which actually measures out to like 0.13 shims will be more like 0.18 or 0.2. Anyway, so yeah, we need to get our shim kits all figured out. We need to get our connectors all figured out. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so now we're, we're just gonna test out the batteries now that we have the connectors all primed and ready to go. <laughs> so this is stock battery at uh, like 7.6 volts, so it's two cell. And we'll do a one shot for, F actually we'll just do full auto and see how well it does. Well, 14.5 at uh, right about 330 or 329 FPS. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the other battery. So this is the new 3S LiPo at storage voltage, which means total 11.4 volts. We'll reset this. Okay, here we go. This time I'm actually gonna hit it. Holy. So yeah, a lot higher rate of fire. <laughs> 24 rounds per second, but still about the same FPS, which, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so now let's go to a fully charged battery. Okay, so now a 3S with a uh, fully charged, just about. So you see total 12.5 volts, 24.5 with storage voltage. Let's see what it's like fully charged. Yeah, like 27, 28 rounds per second. Still about the 230, 227 with 0.12 BBs. I would say that's pretty good. That means uh, I can actually do a lot, hopefully a lot quicker single fire. Oh, interesting. All right, well that was interesting. I mean, I honestly didn't think it would make that much of a difference going to, uh, I knew it would make a difference. I mean, it's higher voltage, but still that much, holy crap. I will say right there, that was really interesting. Going from full auto to semi, it was doing like two round bursts there, 
and then suddenly the trigger locked up, but I could do full, but when I went to full auto, it unlocked the trigger. And then when I went back to single round burst, it was only doing one round at a time. I don't know if that's something, I mean, I haven't pulled this apart, so I don't know exactly how all this works. Yeah, I guess we'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe we can solve that. Again, most of the time I'm just gonna be on semi-auto, but you know, maybe I'll go up to full, full auto at some points, but yeah, I do like that. Cause with the 2S LiPo, I could outrun the trigger, you know, like for the time for it took for the motor to like, to actually cycle everything inside of here, I could, you know, shoot, transition, and just felt kind of slow, not nearly as much as like a crack. So this being faster means uh, I can actually, you know, transition better, do single fire better. So really happy with the higher voltage battery in there with the XT60, but now I think it's time to actually start tearing down into the gearbox in here and having some fun with it. I have made my desk an absolute mess, but thought I'd give you some updates. So as far as the M4 AEG, I took it apart. I've had it on my desk for a couple of days. I've let myself just kind of tinker with it and think about it because when I opened it up, well, actually we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Last night, you know, I couldn't help myself. So I started to pull apart my airsoft rifle, which is a bolt action because if you saw in the beginning, it's it's a little bit down on FPS. I mean, a sniper shooting 400 FPS with 0.12 BBs, that's on the low side. I mean, I'll, some snipers shoot like with way heavier BBs, like 0.4 BBs will shoot like 450, 500. So our sniper is definitely down on power and I, and I took it apart before and kind of cleaned it, but that didn't really do anything. And the other thing too is the hop-up unit, airsoft barrels, they have this little hole right here. And then they put what's called bucking, which is a piece of rubber over that. And then another piece will push down on the bucking. So as the BB flies through, it'll touch the rubber and give it a backspin. And that backspin, which is called hop up, will affect how the BB flies. And when I took this apart and cleaned it, I put the bucking exactly where it had been sitting for years and years and years. And then when it shot, it was kind of curving. So uh, I'm gonna try to clean this barrel and then put the bucking in a brand new spot because the bucking still feels great. And then see if that affects the curving to the left, which I didn't show you guys, but it did do that. <laughs> I was just gonna do that on my own, but I was messing around with this today and I found that this is the air system. You've got a tube and you've got a plunger down in here. See that plunger? And that's what pushes the air out the front to shoot the BBs. And we can take this apart right here. So, and any air leaks into the system is what's gonna cause us to have uh, terrible performance. This O-ring right here sealing against the cylinder and then this cylinder this cylinder here and that O-ring is what makes the seal. So I think my cylinder's fine. This O-ring, I mean, doesn't look too bad and this O-ring doesn't look too bad. And I started playing around with it and it was really strange. If I plugged the hole and pulled the plunger back or the piston back, then it was more resistance than if I pushed the piston forward. So like cocking the gun was moving more air than actually firing the gun. And that was kind of strange to me and I don't know if this is gonna work that well, but what I did after messing around for a bit is in here, there's multiple pieces with a screw. This rubber piece is just to like softly hit against when it stops. Um, but this piece in here, I figured maybe that was doing some stuff. So I flipped it around and the O-ring has a bit of space now, which we'll see how long that lasts. But when I flip that around, it has a way, way better air seal now. And that makes me really excited because maybe we don't need a new spring. It's not like it's lost spring. It's just that it uh, might've been always 
put together wrong from when it was given to me. So now, like that's that's pretty good. You know, it it seals up pretty dang well. So I'm gonna lube this up a little bit, ever so slightly, and then put this all back together, uh, still clean some of this stuff, kind of lube it as I put it back together, and then we can see if that helped the sniper rifle, because that would be sweet if we could use heavier BBs, have correct hop up, and have it shoot way more accurate than I've ever seen it. Let's get to that. All right, before we start talking about the AEG, I had to see how much that affected the sniper rifle. I'm gonna get a piece of foam so I don't destroy my targets. All right, three, two, one. Well, that's weird. Nothing at all, no change. Nice. If anything, it's even less. Well, that's interesting. Maybe it does just need a stronger spring then. Well, that's interesting. Cause I could have sworn it was making a better air seal. It honestly might be the bucking. Like maybe the bucking is, cause like the bucking's like sticking out even when I have it fully off. So maybe we'll come back to this in another video, but hey, taking it apart, we made it worse. <laughs> Let's talk about the AEG, <laughs> the M4, the AR-15. So I've had these parts, uh, I don't think I actually filmed taking apart, but I've had this, the gearbox and this whole setup just kind of chilling on my desk for the last like half a week or so, just so I can kind of really get familiar with it, see, you know, tinker with it a bit and really understand what's going on. At first, when I took this apart, I was like, oh shoot, the gear sets in here they're already shimmed. I mean, you can see that there's a shim right there. And it's got ball bearings in here, which is all great, but it's like, well, what can I upgrade? You know, what can I change on this? I think there is some room for improvement on the shimming. So we still will shim it a bit. And especially with this little lever, which goes like down in here, this is what makes semi-auto, semi-auto. I forget the name of it. I think we need to shim that because that was moving around quite a bit. And <clears throat> all in all, I started looking up parts for this and what I could change. And, and there's a few things that we kind of need to change and maybe I'll talk about those when we get the parts. But right now, as far as what can we do before we have parts, there's a few things that we can do. So one, I really want to clean these cases really well and get all the grease off of them and same for the gears and everything. So we just start from a clean, fresh surface. And then from there, another thing that we can do is down in here, right down in here, the stator and the brushes, I wanna clean those off because I can see they're, they're a bit dirty down in there. Not too bad, but a little bit. So I wanna clean those off, clean off the gearbox housings. And then also I wanna radius them. So right here, you see this little corner I've actually already radiused that. So here's one that's not radiused. And all you're doing on the radiusing is you're removing the little lip right there. So it's kind of like rounds out the corner on this other side. Yeah, it rounds out that corner and apparently it makes this whole front piece quite a bit stronger. So. Those are the few things that we kind of need to do, oh, right off the bat. And also, so this piece right here, you see there's a little metal contact there and it folds all the way around. And then this piece up here, this is your actual trigger. Yeah, so what happens is the metal makes a connection between those two blades right there. And then that's your trigger. So it's like, boom, fire, fire, fire. And then that little lever I was talking about shimming, 
pushes up on this and lets it fall back. As you can maybe see on here, they, uh, there is a bit of wear, and especially on this side. Look at all that wear. See that wear right on there on that terminal? So I kind of want to clean these up and clean in there. Uh, this might be from me doing 11 volts, but it's probably from other people also. So we're gonna clean these up so they make good contact, make sure, I mean, they still look fine to use. And uh, so yeah, let's do that. So we're gonna clean up the trigger. We're gonna clean up the electrical, the stator on the motor and everything. And uh, I've cleaned up the barrel a little bit. We're gonna clean up the cases, radius the corners and go from there. I'll clean up the gears. Yeah, so so we got a bit of work to do. I'll probably time lapse most of it, and then we'll get back to talking when uh, when we get the parts. Oh, and I will say, yeah, again, when I took this apart, this GMP gun, I don't know if this is from EI, if this is like Japanese or made over here. So I've heard there's a big difference between the two. But this one has a lot of high quality components in it, you know, like this is metal, the plunger in here, it's got metal gears right at the top. And like, you know, this front piece is metal, the tap, the tap it, that's metal, these are metal, it's got barrel ball bearings, it's pre-shimmed, metal gears, like it's all pretty high quality stuff. So I'm pretty happy with my purchase in this. And hopefully after we get done with it, it'll be oof, just that much better. I'll start the time lapse and we'll get to it. That is the shim job done on the gearbox here. As you saw, I cleaned out the whole thing. I even made the little bit of a gap here so I can see the one that connects to the pinion gear. So maybe they call that the pinion gear. But anyway, so then I could see that. And then we just went through the shim job on here. And I will say, this isn't like a tutorial. I did follow the Airsoft Tech's shim job video, which I will link down below. And that helped out a bunch um, from what I've understood digging into this a bit for this video. I did a pinion gear shim job, meaning we started all the way from the motor and just made sure everything was lining up. There were a couple things that I saw that were a little interesting. <laughs> for one, my spur gear here, I, I showed you there, it like wobbles a bunch. Uh, so that guy's a little off, but we're able to shim everything. So even with the wobble, it's not hitting anything else, but it does just kind of make it, made it a little bit hard. But we got it all done. Uh, I think it's good for now. The last thing I want to shim is actually uh, this lever right here, which is the one that like pushes, it disconnects the, the trigger, the contacts for single fire mode. But it's finally time to start talking about upgrades. So I did do a parts order and we got some good upgrades like, this <laughs> we got that 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 and with these this should basically turn the whole air system into a double o-ring seal for pretty much everything so right now with the system which I, I i do like this like it's well built but if we grab our tappet here and go into here we are getting decent air leak in here 
And so I think that's where our FPS drop is. So we got like a new head. I think that's what these are called. Yeah, a new cylinder head, a double O-ring air nozzle, and a new piston head too. But that's not all. So I also got a new tapette. I think I got the right one. I was looking for it. This should hopefully work. I just, if you see on this tapette here, you see right where it actually touches the gear right there it's like bent in and so i want to get a new tap head because this one definitely has some wear on it and some of the fun upgrades so we got a mosfet that we can put on there so that way you can actually run lipos safely because this should have a cutoff and this should actually help with some of that like double fire because it has like some braking modes on it and whatnot so we have a MOSFET to put in there, which I'm gonna have to figure out the wiring stuff. Also, this is like a new kit, which comes with new contacts. So again, I was gonna try to clean these, but I, I don't know if I quite trust them. And so with new contacts here, then, and with the MOSFET doing all the work, then these contacts should last a long, long time. So got new contacts and we can redo the wiring there. And if all of this doesn't get the FPS up higher than we want, then we got a M135 spring. Yeah, we can just try some horsepower to it. But first, it's all of these. So yeah, let's just start installing some of these. The memory card ran out of memory, so you kind of missed that last little part, but we got the gearbox together. So I think it's finally time to actually put the gun fully back together and see how it performs. So let's get to that. Alright, so we finally got our M4 back together and uh, I really like this thing so far. Since we've started this video, I actually got a couple other really cheap M4s. Um, but still, this one like takes the cake for like build quality and all of that. I haven't dealt a lot with high quality airsoft guns, but so far, like I, I do really like this. It and I'm excited to start using this as my main gun. As you see, I got like a little orange cover just because, you know, safety. I This gun, <clears throat> this airsoft gun, I would have to be really close or handle it myself to even know if it was an airsoft or not. So, so yeah, I, I definitely want the orange tip on there. And then a couple other things that we added is this little mount on the front so I can do QD for my sling and then a QD mount in the rear here just so that way I can use my QD slings um, with my airsoft gun, which is awesome. So let's uh, finally get this thing together, take off all the safety stuff. I haven't shot any BBs, but I can tell you right now, like here's the sound of it. Yeah, no more double shots anymore. Uh, it's really fast. So I think this is gonna do great. I have a magazine loaded up. Let's get the chronograph 
going and see how well this thing actually does. It just, it looks pretty dang good right now. Yeah, Airsoft is kind of fun. Let's uh, get the chronograph set up. Also, it's like one of the first cold days here in Utah, so I actually have my gloves on. It's a little chilly in the garage. Anyways, chronograph. I'm just gonna make sure that at least fires BBs here. Yep. Yep, okay. So yeah, fires BBs, and let's see. 303, 301. And this should be with uh, 0.2 BB, 0.12 BBs. So it is shooting a bit lower. Interesting. I wonder if it just needs to break in a bit. Go uh, rounds per second with the new MOSFET. 22. Whoops. Yeah, like same rounds per second, but it's uh, shooting a little bit low. At least I think I put 0.12 BBs in there. All right, before the BBs I was using was like from way long ago and I'm pretty sure they're 0.12s, but I honestly don't know exactly where they came from. So now I have known good quality BBs. So let's change the chronograph to be 0.2 and see if this makes any difference. So known good ammo. Yeah, see that's a bit more what I'm looking for. 23 rounds per second. We are in like the 340s. I bet we could even get a couple stray 350s if we really wanted. Yeah, like right there. And that is with 0.1 or 0.2 BBs. So I think that's definitely great. I mean, 0.2 BBs, 350 FPS with an M120 spring in there. I, I think the whole system is working and, and maybe the seals kind of need to break in a little bit more, but honestly, pretty happy with that. Point, 1.15 joules, if I need to go up, then I have that one th M135 spring, but we fixed it and it's good. So uh, heck yeah. Well guys, here it is. Here's the AEG, the M4 from GNP, all modified, all ready to go. And I'm honestly really happy with how this project came out. With all the upgrades, I can actually, like it fires a lot faster as you saw, and it's a lot more controllable. So I can actually do a lot more training with it. Yeah, I changed my sweatshirt so you can actually see the gun because black on black is kind of hard to see. But yeah, I think this uh, will finish out this project. I do need to go and like zero in my scope or my red dot green dot, whatever you want to call it. I need to adjust my hop up. So there's a few more things I need to do before I go out and run around and shoot plastic at people. But I am excited to go put on all my camo, look like a little weirdo out in the woods and uh, maybe get a little more fit in the process. So really excited with how this came out. Again, I think this gun just looks really good. And uh, we do, I do have some more upgrades in the future, both for this gun and for some other stuff. If you like projects, if you like learning, or just hanging out, then I hope you hit the subscribe button. I hope to see you next time. I think that'll do it for now. <laughs> it's been, it's been like a week or two of working on this gun. So I think that'll do it. All right, see you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.